What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techie and today I want to do a quick video showing you guys how to install PyCharm on CentOS 8. So as I stated in the intro, I wanted to do a video just showing you guys PyCharm. If you don't know what PyCharm is, it's an integrated development environment uh, used in computer programming, uh, specifically for Python language. And I wanted to do this video just to show people that are getting into Python an application that they may be using on the Windows system. So if they decide to switch over to Linux, uh, you can actually use this same application in Linux. And I also wanted to do it on CentOS 8 because I don't do many videos using Red Hat or CentOS. Uh, so I just wanted to show you guys on that platform how to actually install the application. Now, first off, let me explain a little bit about PyCharm. It was developed by a Chetnik co uh, company called JetBrains. And PyCharm actually provides code analysis, uh, graphics. Uh, it has a graphical debugger, an integrated unit tester, and it also has integration with version control systems like GitHub. It also supports web development with Django as well as data science with Anaconda. And as I stated a little earlier, PyCharm is a cross-platform application. Uh, you can install it on Windows, Mac OS, as well as Linux. And the version you probably want to use is the Community Edition because it's free and it's released under the Apache license. They also have a Professional Edition which includes a whole lot of extra features. Uh, and I'll go through and show you guys on the website right fast. So uh, let me pull it up right fast. So like I said, it's jetbrains.com forward slash PyCharm. And that'll get you to their website. Uh, and I just wanted to show you guys some of the features right fast. Okay, and this is what I was saying, you know, Intelligent co Code Assistant, it has a uh, Intelligent Code Editor. Uh, smart code navigation, fast and safe refactoring. And a lot of these tools and add-ons and pretty much everything dealing with PyCharm is really to help you with learning how to code as well as coding uh, because it has a lot of tools that will that are used to assist you while writing the code. And like I was saying, built-in developer tools, it has debugging, testing, profiling, uh, version control, deployment and remote development uh, database tools, as well as web development. And if you're looking for more information on PyCharm, just check out their website, like I said, and you can uh, see exactly all the features uh, and read through them. I, I didn't want to read everything, but I wanted to break down, you know, uh, I wanted to show you guys uh, how much it actually costs. And, and I'm not getting paid in any way to show this. Uh, PyCharm, I just thought it was a cool application, you know, for coders. And I just wanted to show you guys the actual application and how to install it on Linux because, you know, I try to push people to Linux. So this is one of the applications that's like up and rising when it comes to Python coding. PyCharm is a good application for Python coding. Uh, so if we look at the pricing, um, this is the professional development. Well, actually, this is for organizations. So they charge a lot more for organizations. And so I want to show you this, but for individual use, use it's a uh, uh, hundred, well, 90 bucks for the first year. And then it goes down from there. So it goes 89 the first year, 71 the second year, and 53 the third year. But that's only if you're paying for the professional developer version of the application. But like I said, like I said, they have a community version and that's what we'll be installing today. And if we go under the downloads link, that'll take us to where you can see the professional as well as the community, which is the free version. And also I was talking about the plugins. They have a whole bunch of plugins. So uh, you can go here and actually download and install the plugins. From their site, they have a plugins area. You can search for different plugins and you can download and install the plugins that you need for your version of the application that you have installed. So let me go ahead on and show you guys how to actually install this on CentOS. 
So just give me one second and I'll have my virtual machine up and running. Okay, so I have CentOS 8 up and running in a virtual machine. It has the GNOME desktop. Uh, this is a fresh install. I just installed it today. Uh, it's fully updated. So let's get to the installation. Uh, the first thing you want to do is update the system. And you can do that by running sudo yum uh, update. Let's run that first. Just make sure we're good to go. And as you can see, it's fully up to date. We don't have to run upgrade in order to upgrade any packages. Okay, so the next thing you want to do is actually install another application. This application is wget, which will allow you to download things from the web. And what we're trying to do is download the, the PyCharm Tor file from their website. So we need wget in order to download it, or you can use like curl or something like that. But I'm going to use wget for this uh, demonstration. So it's sudo yum install wget and press enter. And this will download. And as you can see, wget is already installed. I wasn't sure if it was on this installation, but as you can see, it is. So you don't have to install it if you have CentOS 8. Cause like I said, this is a fresh install. So now let's go ahead on and use wget to download the, the latest package of PyCharm. And I already have it uh, copied. So I'm gonna just paste it in here. Uh, so we can go down and download it. And as you can see is HTTP, you know, downloads, and then it's downloading the latest version, which is 2020.1. And I'll link that down in the description of the video. So you guys can, download it, but just make sure you check JetBrains or, you know, their download page just to get the latest version uh, when you decide to install it. Okay, and just to explain, when you download something in wget, it'll download it to the directory that you're in. So I'm actually in the home directory of Josh, uh, which is where the Tor file actually downloaded to. So what we wanna do is extract that Tor file to the op directory, which is the next can, command I want to run. And so in order to do that, we have to use sudo because in the op directory is outside of Josh's home directory. So it's owned by roots and you have to use sudo and to extract the tor file to the op directory. So the command is sudo tor and then xfz. And then we want to type the Pych pycharm tor that we just downloaded. And then we want to type uh, dash uh, C. And this will specify that you want to extract it to a specific directory. And we can select that op directory. And that's where we want to extract the tor, tor file. So if we press enter on that, it'll go on and extract it out to that directory for us. Okay, so we didn't get any errors. So that means that it ran successfully it extracted that file out for us so now let's change directories to the op directory and that pyshore directory and let's type cd cd uh and then we want to go to that op directory and let's go to pyshore and then within the pyshore directory uh there should be a bin directory that you want to go into so if we press enter uh, and let's list out this bin directory. So if we go ls, and what we're looking for is actually the pycharm.sh. And as you can see, it's right here. So this is what you would use to start up the application. And in order to do that, we want to type sh, and then pycharm.sh. And if we press enter, this will go ahead on and start up the application for us. And the first thing that'll pop up is a privacy policy. So you just confirm and hit continue. And then it's gonna ask you if you would want to share any information. I always click no, but you can. It's it's just to help them uh, with issues they may pop up. So I'm gonna just hit deep, don't send. Okay, and the next thing it's gonna ask you for is setting up your theme. Now it depends on how you code and, and how good your eyes are. I always like a dark theme. That's why I kind of defaults to that. I think a lot of people like dark themes, but it has the Dracula theme and then the light theme. So it all depends on how you work or whatever. But uh, once you s select this, you know, it'll set it as the default uh, for you. But you can also always go into the settings and change it if you need to. 
and then we can click next here this will actually create the launcher script for you so so you should be able to click on the application if this works and if if it doesn't you can also always link this to the desktop if you need to so i'll just go ahead on and do it now this is where it'll down it'll ask you if you want to download the feature software this is some of the feature software they'll install for you they have idea vim which is emulates vim editor uh, you can install that they have r and then the, the aws toolkit which is for cloud support so you can check this out i'm not going to click install on any of them if you know you need any of these plugins then you can you know install these plugins from here and it, so i'm gonna just click start using PyChar. okay and this is pretty much the home page of PyCharm. As you can see, you can create new projects. You can open a project that you already have stored on the system, or uh, you can actually connect to a version control like GitHub or whatever. And they have a menu down here. You can configure, uh, you can go through and configure the settings. You can do plugins. They have configuration templates for new projects, uh, import settings, export settings. So it's just a few other settings. Uh, you can check for updates from here. So just go through this and check it out for yourself. Uh, if you're familiar with programming or if you've used this on Windows, then you shouldn't have any issue uh, using PyCharm on Linux. It pretty much works the same way uh, because I have PyCharm installed on one of my kids' computers. So just trying to teach them how to how to get into coding and stuff. So and then they have a help right here. You can click on that. They have demos, screencasts, you know, tips of the day. Uh, so just go through and check this out. But anyway, I hope this helps somebody that's trying to get into coding uh, on Linux. Uh, this, like I stated, this is a great application, uh, PyCharm, to help you learning how to code if you're new to it, especially Python. So check it out and let me know how it turns out for you. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, always leave questions down in the comments below. I'll be happy to answer. And of course, keep it techie.